Hello lovely viewers, my name is Bella Boating and you are once again welcome to yet another edition of Life Moments right here on UB Clifton's. Our guest for today is in the person of Mr. Osai Kwame who has been a researcher for most of his life. He's here to share his interesting work with us. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Kwame Osei. Daddy, you're welcome. Thank you. Okay. Um, we would like to begin with you giving us a brief history about yourself. Just a brief one. You tell well, us um, about your, your background, your, where you come from, stuff like that. I am 74 years old. I was born in the village called Achinakrom near Ejusu here. Okay, yes. which region is that? Ashanti region. Okay. Yes. Uh, I studied uh, linguistics at the University of Cape Coast and the University of Ghana, Legon. Oh, okay. Yes. And uh, being a Cape Coast product, I became a teacher and retired after being a assistant headmaster at Sumahin Crow Secondary School okay. in the Dwarfo region. Okay. Uh, I was a member of the original uh, syllabus writing committee when uh, the SS, uh, the senior secondary school was introduced. Yes. Uh, I was also the one who translated the Methodist hymn book, uh, about seven hymn, uh, 700 hymns. Oh, okay. Which year was that? 1991. I see. Yes. Was it, was I, it a one-man team? Uh, I started with two others, but unfortunately, uh, they all died, and uh, we were in Accra. Then I was in, uh, invited to Kumasi to be supervised by Reverend Asante Emchi of the Methodist uh, as anti Methodist uh, head. Okay. Yes. Okay, um, you said something about being um, the translator for the Methodist hymn. You translated from um, English, English to Chi. Um, so I'd like to know have, ha, has there been any form of recognition for your work over these years? Uh, yes. Uh, apart from my name being in the book, uh, you know, this is a. Uh, a church program, a yeah. church where so uh, I shouldn't be unduly recognized as a, uh, as though it's a private book that I wrote. Yeah. Okay, okay. So you you studied uh, linguistics both in uh, University of Cape Coast and that's in, right. Um, were they all and like Legon. your first degree program? I did my first degree at Legon uh, at University of Cape Coast. Okay. Sorry. Uh, so then, they are studied English and linguistics and then education. Okay. Naturally. Okay. Then I went to Legon to study linguistics. Okay. Okay. okay, so you are the author of the ancient Egyptians are here and then um, the ancient Egyptian origins of the English language, as well as um, 20th century freedom fighters of African descent mm -hmm. and advanced universal grammar. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's like five books. Mm -hmm. And Daddy, this book that you wrote, which was entitled um, Amen, yeah. if I'm correct. Um, origin of Amen. The origin of, of the word Amen. Amen. Um, what made you even um, give it that title? Both Amen and Amon refer to one God, one and the same God. Okay. If you hear of any town in Ghana here called Amonwi, Amonwi, it is Amon and we, referring to Amenra, which is Amenra. Amen is Amon, and Ra and we refer to the sun. Uh, so anybody called Amonwi, we have a town near Ofensu here called Amonwi. Yes, and there are many people called Amori. Mr. Ose, apart from these researches done by yourself, are there other researches that support, maybe before or after, that supports um, what you've written? Uh, uh, not a book that I know of, okay. but uh, I, I know of uh, Professor Atabrichum, head of the Department of uh, 
French, UCC, University of Cape Coast, who told me he was also writing something similar. Okay. Yes. So let's talk about the ancient Egyptians are here. Yeah. Um, would I be wrong if I say it's your most favorite book written by No, you? you wouldn't be wrong. Okay, so let's talk about <laughs> you that. You wouldn't be wrong at all. Um, why the ancient Egyptians are here? And why not the Ghanaians are here or the Africans are here? Yes. Now, it may surprise you to know that the name Akan is was the original name of ancient Egypt. Yes. Uh, up to now, our elders say, and you are saying, Fata Kaniba. Oh, you know, Makani Yabwa. Oh, Kani this, Kani that. And uh, through my researches, I found out that the car uh, with which uh, our elders are calling themselves was the ancient Egyptian word for spirit. Yeah, and that when we say we are kafo or kaniba, something you are saying we are, that we are spiritual people okay. or religious people. Okay. Yes, okay. ancient Egypt was actually called Kana. Okay. Kana, and uh, I, I got through the modern uh, Bible dictionary. 1968, mm -hmm. that uh, when Egypt conquered uh, the peripheries of the river, uh, present the, uh, what do you call that, uh, the sea, the Mediterranean Sea. When the Israelites crossed? Yes, they, they conquered the okay. people, yes, uh, in the north, of Egypt, that is near the sea. It is only that strip of land that was called Canaan. C A N A, then A N. Then when so you mean the, the the land God promised the Israelites? Yes, I, I'm just trying to uh, prove how I got to know that ancient Egypt was called Cana. Okay. Yes, the word An An in Egypt uh, in the Canaan, as we now call Cana. Is Kana An. Okay. Yes, yes. Okay. And uh, the, the morpheme An comes from N, E N. Okay. But the R R in Kana changes the A e to R again. Okay. So that you get Kana An. Okay. Good. Now, after Egypt had conquered further, all those lands became Kana An. Mm, so earlier, you said something about the Egyptians being originally called Canaan. So how did it come to be that the name changed from Canaan to Egypt? Yes, uh, before the Greeks conquered uh, them in 300 BC, their name was Canaan. Then when the Greeks came to Egypt and saw that they were blacks, they called them Egyptus, meaning blacks or black people. Uh -huh. And they, they called uh, those down there uh, Ethiopia, meaning black faced people. Okay. Uh -huh. So it was this Egyptus which the English made Egypt. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. So uh, the, the Greeks themselves called, called them Egyptus. Okay. And uh, the, the, the Kana people, who were there translated it to Kamet, which, which meant blacks also. Okay. okay. Yes. So I came down to compare uh, our clans, the clans that grouped to form ancient Egypt. You see, and I found a Diana, a Kona, a Sunna, Tina, oh, this something na, 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 yeah. na, na, na. Hey. Yes. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, um, what what is inside this book? What is inside this book is the proof that the Akans, or the ancestors of the Akans, were the original ancient Egyptians. Okay. The mainstream ancient Egyptians. That's the pharaohs, the scribes, 
the priests, yes, uh, and the nobles okay. of ancient Egypt. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, you've been doing this for 40 years. Correct? For a long time. For more yes. than 40 years. Was it? Okay, so Daddy, I'd like to know that um, earlier, as you spoke, you made mention of Canaan and Ghana. What I would like to know is, is there any correlation? And are you referring to um, ancient Ghana or present-day Ghana, as we know it? Oh, well, uh, by the year 30 BC, ancient Egypt had been conquered by Iran. That's about 400 BC. And then by uh, Alexander the Great, the Greek uh, conqueror. Yes, 300 BC. And then 33 BC by Rome. You know, so they were being worried from, uh, by people from the north. Mm -hmm. So the main group left Egypt and went westwards to establish another empire. And they named it after their original home, okay. Kana. Mm. Yes. So it was this Kana, uh, the history of which was written by the Arabs. And the Arabs, in writing Kana, wrote Ghana. That is how the word Ghana came. Okay. And uh, it may interest you to know that J.B. Dankwa, our own J.B. Dankwa, Yes, was the one who conducted its research in Europe oh, okay. and found out that it was Ghana that the Arabs wrote Ghana. That's very interesting. Yes. So when we came here, we, we are still calling ourselves Ghana. That is the Akan that we, we, we found now. So uh, later on, we have, been, we have named our country Ghana. Therefore, the country, the name we have given to our country is actually connected with ancient Egypt. Mm. See? So from Egypt, we established Ghana. Then the Arabs made it Ghana. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, another example is the, the country called Gambia. It is named after a river called Kambi. Okay. Uh -huh. Kambi Egypt. Bolango. It, no, right now, Gambia. Okay. You know Gambia in okay. West Africa. I meant before the name changed. Yes. The, the Arabs and even the French people, if they are writing a, a, a consonant, which is voiceless, consonants are divided into voiceless and voiced consonants. And if the consonant is k, it is voiceless. The its voice counterpart is g. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. So if that k finds itself near vowels, then it becomes voice to g. So Kana became Ghana okay. because of the R and the other vowels that come after, before the K. You see, since our language is a tone language, it always ends in the vowel. Uh -huh. Our language, the Chi language, is a tone language. Yeah, I'm trying to look up so it head. always ends in the vowel. Then if Ghana will come after any, any uh, word, then the, the g finds itself in between two vowels. The one that ends the previous word and the one that, the r that comes after the g. So the k can, in kana will change to g. We call that voicing in linguistics. Mm -hmm. So kana can easily change to ghana. Good. So uh, ancient kana people renamed as Ghana by the Arabs, came down to West Africa here and uh, uh, established this country, which we call Ghana. Good. So it is true that the ancient, uh, uh, the Ghanaians now ca come from ancient uh, Ghana. And the ancient they Ghana, Ghana accounts. Okay. Yes, they come from ancient Ghana. Okay. And the ancient Ghanaians came from Egypt. From ancient, ancient Kana. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. So that is it. So, um, Daddy, it appears most of everything that you have just said, um, it's it's like the only means 
through which you came to this conclusion was through linguistics. So I'd like to know, have you used any other means to um, come to this conclusion? Oh, yes. Uh, you know, uh, in order to be a, a researcher, you have to be observant. Yeah. Yes. When I was a, a small boy <laughs> and, uh, uh, in the 50s, when the women were celebrating the uh, puberty of a, a girl, at dawn, about 5 o'clock, they used to pass behind my window singing the song Oh say ye, ye ye, O tu do ampon ye, ye do as you, ye do as you amino. Uh, in the song, they are saying that they are thanking O tu do ampon, and that O tu do ampon is amin. They do as amin o. That's the meaning of the amino. So they mention amin's name twice, okay. and who was amin? Or who is Amen? Is the ancient Egyptian god of gods. So we have been thanking Amen all the way from ancient Egypt to this place. No. Uh, very good. And then when we are pouring libation today, you hear the elders saying, Ochuedi and Ponson, they address God first. Ochuedi and Pon. And then who is that Ochuedi and Pon? They say, Amouya. And that among we are, as I said at, from the beginning, is a complement or the same thing as Amira, because Amon is the same as Amen. Okay. Um, and then uh, Ria is the same as Ra. Okay. Good. But uh, some people hearing among we are, and without knowing the root of the expression, say it means Ama yeah. the giver of the sun. Yeah, I wanted to ask that. Yes. But wouldn't but, you say... Um, and, and they have gone ahead even to create a mamzu. Yeah. And a madis, a madat. That's very But true. that's not true. Okay. The Amoya is the Amovi, which is named after some towns. Mm -hmm. uh, Amon. Uh, Amon. Yeah. Amin, the son. Okay. Uh, the same as Amira. Have you also, like, spoken to any of our chiefs or maybe... For, for instance, oh, well, I have given uh, copies of my, uh, the ancient Egyptians are here, and then the ancient Egyptian origins of the English language as a gift to Otunfo. Okay. Yes. Okay. But these are just gifts. I don't, I don't think uh, any academic uh, uh, okay. work will come out of that. Okay, so Mr. Say, um, with all these researches that you have done, what are you looking to um, prove with all these researches? Uh, I want people to know, first and foremost, that the accounts or the ancestors of the accounts living in Ghana and the Ivory Coast, like Cote d'Ivoire, were the original ancient Egyptians so that when they are reading the Bible, they will know that it is the Akans who made a nation out of 70 people who came from, you know, uh, the land of Canaan. Okay. Uh, 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 that is the, the, the Israelites. So the, the word is not pronounced Canaan? It's no, Canaan. if you pronounce it Canaan, you, pronou you have pronounced it in the English way. Okay. You have made the letter A, A, okay. yeah, which is wrong. <laughs> it's, it's like, uh, there are many words, <laughs> but, uh, okay. and uh, there are some names like Apia, which is in the Bible, you okay. know, uh, like uh, First Samuel chapter 9, verse 2. They say that uh, Apia was a subgroup. Uh, uh, of uh, the, uh, an uh, Israeli clan. So, uh, so you wouldn't say these are mere coincidences? coincidences. No, no. The, the, for example, Jerusalem. The original name of Jerusalem is Yabuti. Ya 
is Jehovah, Y A H. Abu is an ancient Egyptian word meaning people, and C is to build. Mm. So Jerusalem, the original name is built by the people of Jehovah. Uh -huh. So that Abu is what we have in Abu Sunya. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. The key word Abu su, su means nature. Ya means to be in chi. So Abu Sunya means people of a nature. Mm. So that word Abu, which is found in Yabusi, in, in the original name of Jerusalem, is what we have in Abu Sunya here. Okay. And that Ya, Y-A-H, is what we have in Alleluia. You see? And that same name is what we have in Apia. Mm. Api is the original name of, of River Nile. Okay. And you can find it in Genesis chapter 2, verse 11. And Genesis, uh, Exodus chapter 14, verse 1 and 2. Yes. That river Nile was called P or Api. Okay. Good. So, um, if, um, from what you're saying, accounts are basically Egyptians. And we were the original Egyptians. Okay. And the, those who are right now there in Egypt are Arabs who came from uh, 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 Saudi Arabia in 700 AD, after we had left there uh, okay. a long time. So it means that all the account words that we have are actually like Egyptian words. They are Egyptian words. That has, let me say, evolved. And we, we yes, have yes, them yes. Like the both of the people. Um, okay, so Daddy, can you tell us about the name Pharaoh? Okay. And if the, it has any connection with the accounts, what it means, and yeah. Okay. Uh, in ancient Egypt, anybody who was installed as the king of Egypt became the son of Ra, or the son of God. Yes, so the Egyptians called him Firao. Fi Ra, Awo, from God's begetting, that's begotten by God, or the son of God. So if you become a king in Egypt, you get the title Firao. It was Firao that the uh, Greeks came to spell P-H-A-R-A-O-H. Pharaoh. Mm, okay. uh, so uh, the name that we are pronouncing Pharaoh is actually Pharaoh. Uh, that is what Pharaoh. is in the Bible. Okay. Uh, okay. So, but if you go to the Quran, they have spelled it Feir A O N Pharaoh. Wow. Uh, so the name, uh, the title of the of the king of Egypt was Pharaoh. Mm. And uh, when we came to West Africa here, we gave that name to the biggest river that we saw, that the Asufrao, Volta River. It's, it's called by the accounts Frau. Okay. Mm. Yes. And uh, I, I don't understand. You don't understand. You you gave the accounts actually named the Volta River. Frau. So how well, come I mean, the, 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 it's the, the, called Volta and not Frau? Oh, that Volta is a, is a white man's name. Okay. When the, uh, the English started, yeah, uh, uh, they were naming not only rivers, but towns and mountains and all. Okay, so um, what do the accounts do now that is similar to that of the Egyptians? Okay, they are political organization or kinship. Is a complete replica of the Pharaoh's kingship. Do explain. So what I mean is the Asante Hini, for example, is yeah. the king of the accounts. Yes. And uh, he is held by the uh, the sub chiefs or sub kings, uh, which we call Amanhini. They rule whole areas, each with over 20 towns. And each town has a, 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 
a chief uh, and under these chiefs are also villages where we have a, a dikrofo each head is called odikro and under the odikro are the clans and each head of a clan is a, a council member at the chief's palace Okay, so um, Daddy, one of um, the significant things you made mention of that the account maintained or that they shared with the Egyptians is the chieftaincy system. But then um, one would ask, isn't that what is being practiced across all tribes in Ghana? Well, right now you can you can say that, but originally the Eves, for example. Their leaders were warriors, not chiefs. Okay. Yes. The uh, northern section, the Dagbani, and the the uh, the Gomba people. The their leaders were owners of the land. They called them Tindana, meaning land owner. You see, and uh, the Gans themselves. The their leaders were priests, the Wulome. Okay. Uh -huh. But they all picked the chieftaincy system from their accounts. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. okay. And it may interest you to know that the Everest, for example, uh, their their calendar, their days are all account have account names like Kosi uh, Dagbe, like Judagbe, uh, like uh, Blada. Blala is blada, yeah. and then Ukuda, uh, like that. Yeah. Okay, Daddy, from what you are telling us now, it's 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 more like the Ewes or the rest of the tribes in Ghana learned a lot from the Akans. Yes. Okay, um, and so I would like to mention just a few a few um, names in Ewes specifically. Okay. Since I'm half Ewe. And then we'll see how you can translate and, that. And half what? Half away, half account. Okay. Yes, and you you represent that account. I will represent <laughs> the away. All right. So I'll mention the away name. Since I'm a Monday born, um, I'm going to start from myself. So in away, Monday borns, female girls that are born on Mondays are called a Jew. So do as the honor. Yes, that name comes from. Uh, the god of Monday, uh, who was called in ancient Egypt Ajo, or peace, or cool. Okay, so the Ewe name Ajo yes. is also in Egypt, which is Ajo. Yes. And it's a name of a god. It's an Akan name that comes from ancient Egypt. Okay. okay. Yes, okay. and it's the name of the god of Monday. This is because each day is named after a god. Each of the seven days of the Akan week is named after a god. Uh -huh. We have that Ajo for Monday. So, uh, a, a boy born on a Monday is called Kwajo. Okay. Uh -huh. And a, a girl born on the Monday is called Ajowa or uh, Ajubi. Okay. Ajubi means the child of Ajo okay. or the daughter of Ajo. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. And that's a can. That's a can. Okay. They always say Ajubi or something. Yeah. Okay. You also have Ajubi in even as another name, right? Aju Ajuvi. Ajuvi. Yes. No, that means little Ajo. That's yeah. doesn't it? Or, but or Ajubi, Ajo's, Ajo's child. Ajo's child. Yes. Yeah. But Ajubi B means a child. Okay. In I can't. Hmm. Okay. So we have ma. Bia Ma, mm. Amma's child, or Bia, mm. Ya's child. Uh -huh. Then uh, Friday, we have Kofi. Afi. Uh -huh. So Kofi is Kwa Afi, which has been corrupted. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. To Kofi. Really? Yes. <laughs> so ko Kofi. So it's supposed to be. Kwafi, yes. Kwafi? That's like okay. the Kwajo Kwafi. Okay. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Okay. Yes. 
So each of the days is named after a god. Mm -hmm. That is why the day, the Thursday, is named after Yahweh. The God that the, uh, the uh, Israelites took as their God. It was an Egyptian God. Okay. Uh, some of the ancient Egyptian names that we are using now uh, are Ankara. This is how they are writing it in ancient Egypt. The reason is that what we now call Akuyaba was the Egyptian letter for Ank, life. This is how they wrote it. Now, we already know that the circle is for God. So, Ankra is uh, the name that uh, they were using in ancient Egypt, which accounts are still using. And Asar, which we, are, we now call Asari. Yes, it refers to the sky. But that is why the place where we are living is called Asasi. It is under Asar. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. Lovely viewers, this has been an interesting episode. Unfortunately, we are bringing it to an end. But then if you have any doubts or you want to satisfy your curiosity, you can contact Mr. Osei Kwame on the numbers on your screen. And again, if you want to purchase this book, um, contact the same number on your screen. Do not forget to subscribe to this channel and also share our videos and like our videos as well. Thank you very much. See you next week. Bye.